All right. Uh, the underside of the stylist, some more view of that. Um, we've got these new gears in and that gear, and now it's the morning after the last, or two days after I looked at this last, and I need to put this back together. So I'm going to start by popping the electric box back in place and sliding that kind of where it belongs and then um, hmm. we'll leave the motor up out of the way for a second and then we got Ah. The timing belt which I popped off the top when I got the bottom out, so I guess we gotta get the top open and get that timing belt in the top real quick. top. So this is the belt for the bottom, timing belt for the drive, and we just need to get it back onto its main pulley here, and then uh, there is the plastic um, guide and tensioner that it goes around, which I, let's see, we hold this on the top with one hand and move the machine around on this end. Um, Nope. Okay. Okay, so I'm, there we go. So I used my finger to hold it on the gear up top and then got it popped over the plastic tensioner that's in there. Uh, and oh that's what needs to happen. Before I put this uh, power block back in, can I get this? Nope, can't get that on around there. Gotta get our reverse lever back in place before we put the electric block back in. Okay. So that's on there. We'll pop our set screw in it later. I'm gonna actually stick this. 
one screw in the electrical block to kind of keep it approximately in place here while we work. So that screw's not tight, it's just holding everything kind of where it belongs. And then the motor needs to come in here. So there's this plastic alignment pin on the top bracket that you need to slip the motor over the top of. We had to pull it off to get the motor to wiggle around enough to get us out of the way. And now with that on there, we can get our bracket lined up. And we've got the bottom screw that went through here and this is the one that had the nut on it um, and we'll not tighten that until we get the top screw in the motor bracket. Okay. Top screw in, bottom screw in, and then this lock nut was on there. This is the tensioner for the motor belt. Uh, we didn't do anything with the motor or the tensioner, so that's okay now. Um, we've got the gear that goes on the bottom side here. And So the pulley gear goes on the bottom side here and has to there. Once you get the teeth on, you can rotate that until it's in place and now reverse lever up and it went over center somewhere. Oh. Yeah.
Well, that's... There, okay. That's how that went over center. I pu pushed it around the wrong way. There we go. Okay. Let's... So there's a flat on this shaft, and we need to set our, put our set screw in to match that flat, and That was one of the old set screws, so that's going to be the SAE size. Remember, our new parts had metric size screws in them. All right, now, so this is the fun bit. We got to time the top and bottom with this belt on the pulley. So fortunately, we have the two timing marks there, and those are uh, that's for fully retracted. Okay. So, these timing marks here, I'm going to rotate the top of the machine to be at the very bottom of its travel, and then I don't have access to either of the set screw holes. All right, well, let's start a couple of these set screws and see what we can do about that. That I'll be I'll be able to get to one of them, so as soon as I get this timed again with the set screws in, bar as far down as it goes. Timing mark, timing mark. We've got access to the one set screw which I will put in and snug up and then rotate this to the other set screw and tighten that, and then we will check our feed dog travel. All right. Okay, so up, down, needle all the way down, up. Down, needle all the way down. All right, so our feed should be good there. Uh, 
So hooray for that timing being quick and easy. Now, um, I think I'm done with the top of the machine again, so I'm gonna... You know, I'll leave that cover off for now. Okay. All right. And our hook is rotating freely here. Um, I feel like that collar could be a bit tighter, but that's not bad. All right. So I'll we'll put our gears on, and this is the new gear, so it's got. The metric set screws and time timing the hook. We're gonna grab our needle. Uh, oh, I put the needles away. Okay, we got a hook time on this 522 with our new gear in place. So with our needle there. Hold your hook in place because the needle does go deep enough. And this is an indicator of bad hook timing. The needle goes deep enough that these that this will hit. So um, it goes down and then it's just rising there. And we work our hook around until the hook is coming. just behind the needle as it rises and uh, all right and then we check our other needle position and that also looks like it's okay it's yep okay The needle is still passing behind the eye at just the right time. So now it's time to tighten these set screws down. Uh, I grabbed the SAE bit, not the metric bit. There we go. Okay, that was hook timing on this last bit of gear action, so, uh, okay, uh, we put our gears in and we timed our hook, so we'll finish putting the machine back together here, and that's just putting covers on after doing these gears. So, I'm gonna get the end cover and the top cover on and test it uh, out with these new gears before I put the top or the bottom back on. All right, I went to test this and I discovered that the zigzag 
timing is not right. You can see it's moving the needle at the bottom of the stroke instead of the top. So uh, that means that our cam stack is out of time. So I'll have to pop the top of the machine off and figure out why that happened. Uh, that is not related to any of the gears we replaced underneath. So the good news is we didn't make it worse. We just have a different problem. All right, so there's a gear under here. This is the screw for the cam gear for the zigzag. And then there's the gear under here that drives the cam. And then this rotating knob here is the select between regular and the blind stitch. So um, I don't know. There's one set screw, two set screws in that. So I need to look at uh, actually. There appears to be, yep, there's a screw right down in the center here. Nope, not moving that. That, when I twist on that, that moves our whole zigzag width lever. All right, so I am going to get that set screw and that set screw. There we go, now that's turning freely. Now, yeah, now it's not rotating the cam. All right, so I have to, tighten this up. So that it's rotating the cam a little bit, and then I have to watch the cam timing, and then slide that a little bit and keep trying it out. All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be rotating this gear back and forth until I get the cam in the position that I want it. All right. After a whole bunch of fiddling with that gear on the cam timer, and that was literally move it a teeny bit, tighten it, rotate to see if the needle bar is moving when the needle is down, and then move it ever so slightly and check it again. So. Uh, I think we're actually ready for a little test here because you can see it's not moving the needle as we go there. However, as I'm testing this, you'll note we're missing the right hand side, uh, which means I must have a needle height issue uh, or a hook timing. I could have both. So I need to check that more carefully. Let me get all this out of the way and look again. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is adjust the timing back a little bit. 
because our needle is passing behind the right hand side a little bit early or a little bit late it looks like and then on the left hand side it is a little bit early because the needle is still can still come up a teeny bit there so let's that and then that and I will move the needle or the hook all right uh, so I made a adjustment on the bobbin tension. The hook timing was a little bit fast. It was not catching on this side, so it got put, uh, so I moved it, um, and that fixed our missing stitches on the right hand side problem, which made this row here, but the bobbin tension was incredibly high, so I just lowered it, um, and I need to draw my thread out. There. Get our thread drawn up, and then do a... Quick test here with our lower bobbin tension. Uh, there, that is much nicer. Okay, it's still touched high, but um, it's manageable here, so. We'll call that good on the bobbin tension, and this machine is ready to go.